welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. When you train, we all know muscle and strength gains happen. You may even know tendons and bones adapt too. Yet a lesser appreciated adaptation is the repeated bout effect, which directly links to muscle damage, recovery, and fatigue. It also indirectly links to other training areas like exercise selection, training volume, and training frequency. Let's dive into the repeated bout effect and then discuss what it means for you. When training intensely when you're unaccustomed to it, significant damage and swelling of the muscle and connective tissue, prolonged decreases in muscle strength, delayed onset muscle soreness, and muscle stiffness happen in the following days after. Chances are you felt this. If you're brand new to training or you've returned to training after a break and your first session is super intense, you'd have experienced substantial soreness and fatigue in the days after. However, when you repeat the training, this time you'll experience lower damage and swelling of muscle and connective tissue, a lower reduction in strength, and lower delayed onset muscle soreness and stiffness in the following days. Why is this? Your body adapts to protect your muscles from damage and speed up your recovery. This is the repeated bout effect. But how much can the repeated bout effect help your recovery in the long term? The best study to date showing the potential power of the RBE is from 2020 out of Greece. The researchers recruited untrained men, which is great since their muscles tend to have the greatest vulnerability to damage. The training was far from what most people typically do. I'll describe it and then detail why this irregular training was a great idea. Subjects trained their quads on an isokinetic dynamometer which applied forces to bend the knee, producing their max effort to resist it, thus loading their quads under eccentric contractions. Eccentric contractions are where the muscle produces force while lengthening. During the concentric contractions, the dynamometer did not resist, allowing them to extend their knee easily, so the training was eccentric only. Every session, they performed 15 of these eccentric only repetitions, for 5 sets, with 2 minutes of rest between the sets. The training was performed once a week for 10 weeks. Why did I say this training was a great idea? It would have been seriously damaging. Eccentric contractions are known to produce significant damage. Higher rep numbers, contrary to what may be popular belief, are more damaging. And the fact 5 sets were performed further adds to the damage. Remember subjects also produced their max effort to resist the dynamometer, meaning these eccentric contractions were maximal, thus inducing more fatigue than the sub-max eccentric contractions occurring in typical workouts. The fact each rep was max effort also technically means as subjects got stronger, progressive overload naturally took place. Right before, and one, two, three, and five days after each training session across the 10 weeks, numerous measurements were taken to assess the subject's fatigue. Specifically, the pain-free range of motion subjects could move their knee joint through, their delayed onset muscle soreness levels, their concentric strength, their eccentric strength and their isometric strength were measured. On top of these, right before and two days after each training session, blood samples were taken to measure creatine kinase, which is an indirect measure of muscle damage, and C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. So what did the researchers find? Across the 10 weeks of training, their pain-free range of motion and delayed onset muscle soreness continuously decreased in the following days after each training session. By weeks 8 to 10, the subjects experienced virtually no delayed onset muscle soreness. Compare this to weeks 1 to 3 where substantial soreness was seen after training. The recovery of their concentric, eccentric, and isometric quad strength across the 10 weeks became a lot faster in the days after training. For example, by weeks 8 to 10, very little decreases in eccentric strength was experienced in the days after training. Contrast this to weeks 1 to 3 where the fatigue was a lot worse. Both creatine kinase and C-reactive protein continuously decreased across the 10 weeks, indicating that the training was producing very little to no damage and inflammation in the later weeks. These findings indicate that RBE can be powerful. Training that first produces a ton of fatigue and damage for multiple days after, no longer really did so as you continue to train across the weeks. Now, with recovery of concentric, eccentric, and isometric quad strength, there wasn't always faster recovery every single week. For example, with isometric strength recovery, when comparing weeks 7 to 8, recovery was slightly worse in week 8. So it can be normal for recovery to fluctuate between weeks. You may even notice this with your training. But the key is when looking at the bigger picture, recovery becomes faster. 
So consistent training is needed to develop the repeated bout effect, but consistent training is of course crucial for hypertrophy and strength. Tracking your workouts and being aware of your progression can be valuable, and our partner Alpha Progression is truly a great app that can help you. Aesthetic graphs can visually display your progression with things like your strength levels, the number of workouts you've completed, your body weight, the number of sets you've been performing, and even circumference measures of body regions. You can input your own program, or explore their flexible workout generator where you can specify your training experience, what equipment you have, how long, and how often you want to train. A great thing is the training variables deployed in these workouts are based on meta-analyses and reviews from the scientific literature. Plus, you can still edit these workouts, allowing you to individualize things. The app also contains a database of over 550 exercises with excellent video and text tutorials behind each. The link in the comments and description gives you two weeks free of all the app's features, plus 20% off a subscription if you do go beyond the free trial. At the House of Hypertrophy, we don't just partner up with anyone, so you can rest assured the app is sincerely high quality. Since the RBE lowers soreness and muscle damage, isn't this bad for building muscle? This assumes soreness and damage are strong drivers of hypertrophy, but the research fails to support this. We've analyzed this research in a previous video. Anyway, what could the RBE potentially mean for your training? Exercises training muscles with a stretch are great for hypertrophy. This study by Mao compared overhead extensions to pushdowns. Overhead extensions stretched the long head of the triceps. Triceps hypertrophy was superior with the overhead extensions. Another Mao study compared seated to lying leg curls. Seated leg curls stretched the biarticular hamstring muscles more. Hamstrings hypertrophy was superior with the seated leg curls. But exercises training muscles with a stretch can cause quite a bit of muscle damage, which may be unideal if you'd like to train these exercises with more volume or frequency. Yet, the RBE would suggest as time passes, your recovery from stretched exercises should become quicker, allowing you to train them more if you'd like. Another implication of the RBE is high-frequency training, where you train a muscle on 5 or more days per week can be viable. Though initially some people may struggle to recover between sessions, the RBE can change this across time. Indeed, as analyzed in our training frequency video, there are studies showing high-frequency training to be perfectly fine for building muscle in trained individuals. Likewise, the RBE also makes it possible to handle more training volume over time. Indeed, as analyzed in our video on set numbers, increasing your sets as you progress throughout your training career might be helpful for muscle hypertrophy. Finally, the RBE can make certain recovery worries not an issue. Some people understandably have recovery concerns about training to failure or even past failure with something like drop sets. Your recovery durations will likely always be longer when you're training to failure or past it. But the RBE may make this not a practical issue. Say you're training three times a week. Initially, you may struggle to recover from performing a few sets to or past failure per session. But with some time the RBE develops and performing a few sets to or past failure may no longer be a recovery concern. With the Greek study, we presented the average results. The researchers fortunately provided the individual data as well. Virtually all individuals aligned with the average results, seeing much less fatigue from training across the 10 weeks. Yet there were seemingly around 2-4 to four individuals who although saw improvements across the 10 weeks, still experienced fairly notable fatigue after training in the 10th week. Thus, some individuals failed to develop the RBE as well as others. Ultimately, with training experience, you should be able to determine how your recovery progresses. Perhaps you'll align with many individuals who experience significantly less fatigue over time, or perhaps not. Of course, factors besides training, such as nutrition, age, stress levels, and sleep will all contribute to your recovery. A lesser appreciated training adaptation is the RBE, which significantly decreases the damage and strength loss you see from training intensely over time. It has potential links to training in these ways. Some may be hungry for more information. What about accumulated fatigue? Is this really a concern? What about CNS fatigue and connective tissues? I actually plan to have future videos on these, so stay tuned. Some may also be wondering, does fatigue and the repeated bout effect differ between muscles? And if so, does this impact training volume and frequency recommendations? Also, is it possible to develop the repeated bout effect without even experiencing damage and soreness in the first place? We've answered these two questions on our new Patreon page. We have a video detailing how it is actually possible to develop the repeated bout effect without experiencing damage and soreness in the first place. 
Plus, we have an article analyzing the literature on how fatigue and the repeated bout effect may differ between muscles. I'd be sincerely grateful if you consider checking out the Patreon page. I'm hoping that the content over there will be valuable and interesting to you. If you don't like it, you're free to cancel at any time, and you can ask for a full refund, and I will grant it. No further questions asked.